Welcome back to the Return Homestead. My name is Mike and my wife Marty and I homestead 50 acres in southeastern Kentucky. We've been busy remodeling a 2001 mobile home that was on the property when we bought it. We've been working on the second bedroom that's just next to the laundry room. And today we're going to show you some highlights of the work that's been ongoing there. So we're getting started on the second bedroom, the spare bedroom here in the mobile home. We aren't quite finished with the laundry room project. We still got to cut in the plumbing for the washer and then insulate and cover with drywall here. Then we're going to shiplap this wall. We're going to wrap the shiplap around to the door through this corner. So all this old trim has to go. We'll need to pull the trim off of the door. So we can install a new standard size and tight door. We're not real crazy about these mobile home doors. This wall is going to be half beadboard and then half paint up top. We've got some uh, peeling of the paint where it was coming off of the vinyl down at the bottom. So rather than try to smooth that out, we're just going to cover the bottom of the wall with beadboard. Wrap that all the way into the closet. We've already got texture redone on the ceiling. So it's completely ready for paint now. We do need to replace this old dated light fixture. We haven't chosen one for the room yet. And we'll do something about dressing these windows up once we're all done with the rest of the room. Of course, the washer and dryer need to go back in the laundry room. These are not the washer and dryer that will be in the laundry room permanently. We've got a front load set of machines that we'll be bringing down from the other house, but we'll put these back in temporarily. So that's the room as we get started. We got a lot of work to do, so we're gonna get busy doing it. To make the installation as clean as possible, we decided to go with the Shark Bite washing machine outlet box for half inch plumbing, which is what we have here. At least I hope it is. <laughs> it should be. And we're gonna get this uh, installed. I've got to figure out the current setup. Uh, get this box pulled off, which will mean turning the water off so we can unscrew the valves. Then we'll pull this box, fit the shark bite box in place, take some measurements to build framing. I'm gonna build framing around the new box so that it has good firm support. And then we'll use the roto zip to cut out the drywall on the other side. Well, you gotta learn to expect the unexpected when you're doing a remodel. Uh, this is a two by three wall. This box is designed for a two by four wall. It is substantially deeper than the other box. This one's only two and a half inches deep. And the new box is of course, three and a half, exactly one inch bigger. So we've got to figure out a solution here. It is the 4th of July, which means there are no supply houses that are open that are going to sell a 2x3 box. Lowe's does not carry anything that would fit inside of a 2x3 wall. And I do like this Shark Bite box. There's a couple of nice features. First of all, these valves are extremely well secured inside of the box. They're brass. They'll also fit onto any type of piping that you want to stick into them. So the valves are extremely well built, well secured to the box. The box is also designed to be glued off to the top of the drain, which means that if you do get any kind of a leak, it all goes into the drain and down. Whereas this box actually has the drain sticking up inside of the box, which means leaks are just going to run out the front of the box. So I want to try to use this box or one very much like it. I have not been able to source a two by three shark bite box that would fit inside of this wall. 
So I need other options, and the only other option is to literally think outside of the box. So this is a two by three wall currently, but it can easily be made into a two by four wall by adding just one inch of furring to these studs. So if I rip a, uh, a current two by four down so that it's only one inch thick, and then nail it up to each one of these studs, we'll end up with the same space that we would have in a two by four wall, and then the box is gonna fit just fine. So that's what we're gonna do, is get busy ripping down some studs. So just a few minutes on the table saw with the rip fence set at one inch, and we have a collection of boards that are one inch thick. So all we need to do now is cut them to length, nail them up on the bedroom side of the wall, and we'll have a two by four wall when we're done. First we'll measure and cut for the top and bottom plates. They are 79 and 3 8 respectively. Make a mark at 79 and 3 8 We need two boards for that. In the end I had to recut these boards. It's actually 76 and 3 8 one of those weird things that happens when your tape measure is upside down. We don't need a ton of nails up here to hold this in place. So that's going to give us an extra inch of wall and allow us to install this box correctly the way it was meant to be installed, or at least partially the way it was meant to be installed. You may be thinking that this type of remilling of wood Carving it down to a different size and shape is uncommon or unusual, but this is actually done all the time in construction. In fact, I'm noticing here in a mobile home, uh, built in a factory, but they didn't get the walls exactly right, so they ended up having to fur out with a piece of plywood before they could put the drywall on, so this is very common. Measure each one of the studs and cut them to size, nail them up. 81 and 3 eighths. Yeah, that's 80 and 7 eighths. That's interesting. Should we do that measurement? 81 and 3 eighths. 80 and 7 eighths. 80 and 3 quarters. 80 and 3 quarters. And 80 and 3 quarters. Well, that's an interesting collection of measurements but that'll work out for us. So we had uh, 81 and 3 eighths, 80 and 7 eighths, and these are all 80 and 3 quarters. Let's go get them cut. Can't argue with the tape measure, huh? You could. It's like arguing with your GPS. <laughs> Do that all the time. Uh -huh. And this is just furring strips going in, right? So it doesn't matter that this wood split off. It's still going to give me that same one inch extra distance. I can use that without worrying about it. It is a little tight. And 
just like that, instead of buying a different box, we simply built a different wall. Now we have a two by four thickness wall. It'll make it easy to install this box. So I got the outlet landed inside of the wall. All that's left to do now with this wall is to get some insulation up. I've already cut this one to length uh, to cut it down uh, the width so that it'll fit that first stud bay. I need to run my knife through the paper. Now I just held this up to the wall and ran my knife down the stud. It's going to give me a good tight fit inside of the stud bay. Don't worry, this little scrap that we're cutting off will get used somewhere. Remember, if you're going to be hanging a lot of this stuff, you want to protect yourself from all of this fiberglass. Well, we've only got a few bays here to do. I'm just going to gut it out and get a little itchy here. Get a nice tight fit. Again, this is not for uh, insulative properties for heat. This is strictly for sound. We want to fill this wall up with as much material as we can so that whoever's sleeping in here doesn't have to listen to the washer and dryer. Thanks, Betty. We'll do the same thing here. Just set the insulation down on the floor. Hold it up to the top. Grab the knife. Just run it right along the top plate. That marks a good line for me. And then the same idea, snug it up on one side. Find the stud on the other. Hair Excuse ball. me. <coughs> Hair ball, right? If you've never worked with this stuff, you'll understand why that cough is there once you start cutting on this. You get hard on the lungs and throat. now to finish up. And over time, that insulation will expand and fill this entire space, especially if it has drywall on this side to kind of hold it in. I've also got to cut the insulation to go around our plumbing box and all of the plumbing pipes that are underneath it. So we'll be stuffing insulation around and behind that as we go. All right, these bats should fit snugly into this next stud bay. Just got to cut it to length. Uh, the bats are cut for an eight foot ceiling. This is only a seven. So we do need to trim these off the top. I guess if you wanted to, you could trim it off the bottom. <laughs> huh. Huh. Funny how that works. And then I'll have 
have to notch everything around the electrical box. Now if we were worried about creating a thermal barrier as well as a sound barrier, I would have stripped or uh, cut a notch in the back of this insulation so that I could have wrapped it around these wires. The wires become uh, kind of a conduit for cold air, so that cold air will run down the wire and getting that insulation wrapped around it helps to ensure you get a good thermal mass around the wire and stop that cold air from moving around. But we shouldn't have that problem in this wall. One last way to go. This one's a little more technical. Just kind of feeling around here for the back of the box. Kind of want to split the insulation and pull it apart. See it goes around the box well. So it may not look pretty, uh, I'm not a professional insulator, but I've got a thin layer of insulation that'll cover those pipes and everything should lay flat when I put the drywall up here. That's it, we're ready to hang drywall. We got the drywall hung the other day, now it's time to get some mud over the screw holes. I do wanna check these screws real quick, make sure I've got everything driven in as far as it needs to be. Check. Need to hit those in the corner. Uh -oh. We have quite a few screws that are sticking out here. So before I get to spreading mud, I'm going to grab a battery and uh, get these things screwed in. Same process as before, just trying to get these screw holes covered up. I'm going to be a little bit pickier on this wall. We want to try to do uh, an actual level 4 smooth surface. And uh, our reasoning for doing that is we don't want to have to replace all the drywall in this room. And the rest of the room has the uh, vinyl on gypsum on it. So that stuff's already got a really smooth surface. And we want it to kind of match as close as we can get it. We'll need a really smooth surface finish on this wall. But this is just our level one going to a level four, so it doesn't have to be perfection on the first jump. We'll be putting trim in the corners, but I'm going to go ahead and cover these screw heads anyway. It's like my mud tightened up a little bit. When you get little uh, chunks of mud getting spread on the wall, it can get really hard to smooth those out. If I was doing a larger area, I would definitely remix this mud, but I'll just mix up a little bit here in the tub. And keep going. Remember that any excess mud you leave on the wall, you'll have to sand off later. So you might want to go ahead and Take a little extra time to smooth things out as much as possible. The tapered edge of the drywall does leave you with a trough where the two pieces meet up. But you're not trying to fill that trough up on the very first pass. You just want to get enough mud on here to set the tape into.
making sure that the edges are pressed firmly into the mud. Don't have any edges of the paper sticking up anywhere. Much less chance of wrinkling the paper if I've got a little mud on my knife when I press into it a second time. That's pretty much it for level one. We got level three mud put on the wall last night. I just got through sanding this down to make sure there's no rough edges in here. Now it's time for the level four. Now I've never done this before, so this is uh, kind of an experiment. I've been playing with mud enough that I'm hoping I can get a nice smooth finish out of this so that it will match the uh, paint that's on the vinyl that we already have up on the other walls. If you're working with a brand new box of mud or one that's a little bit old and stiff, you might want to throw the drill in and give it a good stir. I did that yesterday. We've got some nice smooth mud to work with at the moment. Sunshine, what are you eating over there, kid? Hey, there's nothing in here to eat. You want to put the mud up? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Been using the small six inch knife. It's time to switch to the bigger knife. I want to make sure we get a nice large area, very thin covering of mud for this final coat. Y'all forgive me if I make a mess on the floor. I am not an expert when it comes to using this knife. Just like with the smaller knife, just want to feather the edges and make sure everything floats on nice and even. I'm not looking to get a big heavy coat of mud this time. Really just want to cover these edges up and allow them to feather out onto the rest of the wall. Remember that any excess mud you leave up on the wall, you will have to sand off later. <laughs> so, you don't want to spend the hours in here with a sander. Make sure you get just that thin layer of mud that you're looking for. better if the mud is too tight it gets really sticky and it doesn't want to slide across the wall grabs onto your knife and pulls instead of smoothing out application of a little extra water we can thin that out get everything to lay in nice and smooth And just because I'm already in the process, I'll go ahead and put more mud down below too, even though these will also be up behind the bead board. And that should be it. In theory, that's going to give us a nice smooth wall. Now we're into the home stretch here in this small bedroom. We've got everything finished up on the wall. The drywall is now up to a level four. Hopefully that's going to look like we expect when we get it painted. Uh, we've got bucket of paint. We've got the airless sprayer. I've got an extra light because we had to remove the light fixture in here. Bucket of water to get the sprayer going. We've got the window taped off. Looks like we're ready to go to start uh, spraying paint up on the wall. We're gonna try to get a nice even coat using the airless sprayer. Go.
short order, we have a coat of paint on the entire room. Now Marty and I do not like white ceilings. We like to paint the ceiling the same color as the walls. Now, I'm not sure how well this shows up on camera, but that is a, actually a blue. So it's in the same tones as what we put up in the laundry room, but it's got a blue tint to it. Painted the closet too while we were at it. Takes almost no time to spray this stuff on. It's gonna take longer to wait for it to dry so we can come in with a second coat. And just like that, we're done with uh, the majority of the work that needs to be done in this small bedroom. We still have to put the trim in. We're still gonna put some beadboard up on the walls, but the paint was the big part of the project. And we've got it painted now, even sunshine agrees. This is a much brighter room. We did go with a uh, kind of a grayish blue on the wall instead of a white. And you would think that would make this a dark space, but there's just something about this color that actually causes the space to glow. So it actually got brighter once the paint dried. So we've got a second coat up on a couple of the walls and we're looking forward to it drying completely so we can see exactly what this room's gonna look like. But it should be bright and airy, perfect for a guest bedroom. So this was my first attempt at a level four drywall. We were able to get this extremely smooth. It actually seems to be smoother than the vinyl on uh, gypsum that we have in the rest of the room. Uh, so we're really pleased with the result here. It just takes a little bit of time. You gotta be patient, put the drywall mud on in very thin layers and make sure you take the time to work it with a sander and get all the lumps out before you put on the next coat. Everything came out nice and smooth, so we're really thrilled about that result. Just got to wait for this to dry. We've just finished putting the second coat on it. We do appreciate you joining us here on the Return Homestead today. As promised, we brought you some highlights of this space. We've got a little more work to go. We may bring another video about this before we begin work in the rest of the house. If you haven't subscribed yet, please take a moment, go in there and subscribe. And if you wouldn't mind, hit that like button while you're in there. We'll see you next time. Thank you.